Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Nicole Campbell and this is our next episode of Music Musings. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most beloved pieces of Robert Schumann. This is his Traumerei. Traumerei is part of a set of 13 pieces known as Kinderzähnen, or Scenes from Childhood. Apparently, Robert was inspired by a comment that Clara Schumann, his wife, had told him, and she said that sometimes he reminded her of a little child. So we have these beautiful scenes from childhood. Each has its own special charm, but this one has become very, very popular, and we're going to try to explore why that is. Traumerei is translated as dreaming. And Schumann's truly able to take us to this dreamlike state in the way that he's written the piece. We're going to take a look at the inner archaeology of it and try to discover how. He begins very restfully. It's, it's quite uncommon, actually. It's almost like he's beginning how you might end a piece. <laughs> So the beginning, you can imagine that, the end. Just add another note in the bass and you're good to go. Well, I think the reason he does that is he wants us to have this feeling that we're resting. It's almost like a sigh if you breathe in, and a sigh of relief. And then he has what I call the dream motive, okay? We feel like we're going somewhere. He's drawing us into this dreamlike state. If he didn't reach up that big stretch, it might sound something like this. Right? It would sound like a very beautiful chorale, a very beautiful melody, but it doesn't have this feeling of bringing us to a whole new place, okay? The other thing is that he creates intimacy. How does he create intimacy? Well, I'm going to play the soprano line and what you might call the tenor line, okay? Okay, the counterpoint is what creates the intimacy in this piece, I believe. Could this be Schumann's way of telling Clara he loves her, right? The, they're not together at first, but they're only a third apart. They move down, and then there's a voice exchange, and then they're joined with only an octave between them, but it's the same notes. So it's able to feel like these two different voices coming together and joining, which is a very pure uh, union in music. And following that, we have, again, repeating that restful motive. Here's the dream motive. But this time it's much different. There's this kind of tight twinge of sadness. How does he achieve that? He's going to A instead of F. Okay, he's going up a sixth. And we also have a dominant seventh chord. That means we've got a second in there. There's a C sharp. Dominant seventh chord of D minor. So there is this slight sadness to it, but it's, it's more nostalgic than anything, almost like a memory. And then what we have following that is some new counterpoint. So that gesture has these kind of tiers, these levels. So first it's the soprano voice, and the alto voice, and then tenor, and then if you want to say the bass. Okay, so there's this beautiful layering from top to bottom, and perhaps it's this dreamlike state we're falling out of. So in a way we have this earthly connection. We know what the dream state feels like, because we have something to compare it to. How 
is this motive different? It's not to F, this time it goes down to E flat compared to F. And he explores these feelings and again there's this intimacy with the counterpoint. So listen to what he's doing. So again, it's these echoes, these resonances that are happening from the top to the bottom. And then he comes back to B flat, okay? This time it's higher, it's not C, F, it's F, B flat. He doesn't stay there very long, he rests, but... This feels a little bit more anxious in a way. Okay, now we're going up to B flat. It's the highest note I believe that we've had up to this point. Sunshine comes out, but... Right, again, we're returning to this dominant seventh chord of D minor, okay? If he was going to D major... more sunshine and rainbows if you will but he needs to show us that there is there is this beauty also in not always being in the dreamlike state okay it's he's cradling us in this D minor it doesn't feel sad it's nostalgic somehow again here's that counterpoint down on a seventh chord, going to F major again, uh, and we're back home, right? We repeat just like how we started. You can almost imagine remembering your childhood, okay? And then the defining moment of the piece is when he goes to this ninth chord, okay? Very unusual chord to use during the 1830s. We have to say goodbye to that dream, but we're holding on to it one last time. He writes a fermata over it. It's the only part that he has a fermata held. So he wants, he says, come join us. Let's, let's say hello to that dream one more time. And then we have to come back to reality. but it makes coming home feel much, much more beautiful. What he has after that, right, we return back to something familiar, but the only time that he repeats this note by note is at the very end, before we had, and then down to F. But this time we have G, A, B flat, repeated G, A, B flat, okay? He does color the harmony differently. Okay, so perhaps this is, there's a voice exchange there. You know, if we look at the counterpoint, we have a voice exchange and then they join together. Perhaps this is Robert and Clara joining together here. Schumann's able to capture this nostalgia, dreaming of one's childhood through the way that he treats the harmony, the motive, where he chooses to rest and where he chooses the piece to move forward. It is reminiscent and, and dreaming of, of one's childhood while still keeping in mind that we are still on this earthly reality, but there is hope and there are dreams and everybody can relate to that. 
If you enjoyed this episode of Music Musings, please be sure to download the full version of my recording of Schumann's Traumerei. Simply click the links below in the info section. You can download it from iTunes, Amazon, or CD Baby. Anytime you do this, it helps support me in my future episodes of Music Musings. It's a lot of time, energy, and expense that I put into these videos, but I really love sharing about this music with you and hope that you'll continue with me on my journey. See you next time. Thanks again.